what happens is you've got uh, two sides and an angle, and that's all they give you. And the reason it's ambiguous or unclear is because, you know, we don't know what this angle is. It's not a rigid situation, meaning that it's possible that we can maybe rotate this side, see the six side? We could rotate it in such a way that maybe another triangle could be formed. So they're just giving us the information, but they're not necessarily telling us how to draw the triangle or how to construct it. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to want to drop an altitude, okay, like a perpendicular, to the opposite side like so, okay? We have to find out what that height is. Now the way that you would do that is you would say, just like in right triangle trigonometry, the Sokotoa, you would say sine of 30 degrees, right, equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse, right? So h over 10. Now if we cross multiply, you can see h times one is h equals 10 times sine of 30. And the sine of 30, you can go to your calculator or if you know this is a half, 10 times a half is five. Okay, so that means that this altitude is five. So again, like I was telling you before, we don't really know what this angle is here. So what you could do is you could rotate this in such a way, and uh, think of this as a circle. Okay, I'll try to draw a decent circle here for us. Okay, something like that, right? So this is like the center of the circle and you're rotating it. So really there could be another triangle that's formed like this, okay? so. What you want to analyze is you've got this longer side here, okay, adjacent to the acute angle. And the side that's across from that acute angle, if this side is shorter than the altitude, like say for example if it was only four, if you went to rotate it like this, it wouldn't be able to reach the opposite side, so there'd be no triangle possible. If this side was exactly the same as the altitude, if this was five, then when you went to rotate it, it would just barely touch the side right here, and there would just be one triangle, a right triangle. If this side here is longer than the side adjacent to this acute angle, like say this was 11, if you tried to rotate it like this, it would extend past this side right here. So you could only rotate it out to the right like that. So that would just be one triangle possible. And what we have here is a special scenario where the side, <clears throat> excuse me, opposite the acute angle is in between, see six is in between the altitude and the side adjacent, it's in between five and 10. And so you can see we can construct this triangle that looks something like this, right? And then we've got the original triangle that I drew, which looks something like this. And again, it's just because we're rotating this side like so. Now, if you want to see, you know, all the steps for solving these triangles and how to work through them, I'll have links to the videos that I did talking about how to actually solve the two triangles and so forth. But let's look at another example. Uh, we're going to talk about the, if you have an obtuse triangle where this angle is greater than 90 degrees. In this case, this was uh, an acute angle is less than 90. But I just wanted to mention if you're preparing for the ACT or the SAT, you know, you're talking about trigonometry and these types of things and you're, you're preparing for those tests, I have a video course for both the SAT math section and the ACT math section. Uh, I'll have links for those. Check those courses out if that's something that uh, you feel that would be beneficial. They're excellent uh, courses. But let's talk about this triangle. So. Here we've got an obtuse angle, and the thing that you want to remember when you have an obtuse triangle is that the side that's across from the largest angle should be the longest side because, you know, an angle is like a hinge. So if I open up that hinge like that, this side is going to be the longest side. It's going to be open very wide, right? But you can see in this case, that's not what's happening at, at all, right? Basically, we're looking at, hmm, 8 is shorter than 10. If I was to really draw this to scale, okay, it would look something like that. You see there's this big gap here. This is not long enough you know, to reach this other vertex over here of the triangle. So in this case, there's no triangle possible. Now, if I was to reverse it and make this side eight and this side 10, then there would just be one triangle possible. So when it's an obtuse uh, angle given like this, there's either gonna be one triangle or no triangles, but not two triangles, okay? One other thing I was gonna mention about this uh, ambiguous case here is that sometimes I write it like this. Okay, it's a little bit more descriptive. It's like side, side, angle. And notice I did a lowercase a to represent an acute angle, okay, which is what we have here, less than 90. And then I have the side that's adjacent, right, next to, these, uh, next to the angle. That is longer, that's why I made it a capital letter, than the side across, that's why I made this a lowercase s, okay. So when you have that set up, then you know that there's a potential for two triangles. Not guaranteed, you have to check it by dropping that altitude. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel, check out more math tutoring videos on my YouTube channel, Mario's Math Tutoring, and I look forward to helping you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.